Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Today taking a look at the 6 inch Black Series Han Solo Exegorth set. Uh, this was the San Diego Convention exclusive and also released on Hasbro Toy Shop. So let's head to the table and check this one out. So first up a look at the packaging and as what we traditionally get for the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, you do get a bit more of a stylish look and what we have here is a pretty nifty little piece. Uh, you got this outer shell first that has the sketch artwork of the Millennium Falcon. That's an overhead view that stretches here as you see off on the top of the packaging down on the bottom and then over to the left side you got the front end of the Falcon going there running around the center of the packaging to hide the seams of these two sides that do stretch apart. You get this little black ribbon if you will Star Wars Black Series logo on it and you can kind of see it in the right light here it's, it's black on black really but nice glossy embossed look here Han Solo Exegorth Escape being the name of the set. And then on the right side of this outer shell, you got a nice artwork of Han Solo with that breathing mask on. Flipping on the back side, you've got the Star Wars Black Series logo once again with Han Solo Exegorth Escape underneath that. Just the Rebel Alliance symbol here on the center of that little black ribbon thing on the back side. And moving on to the right side of this packaging, you got a very large write-up about Han Solo, about him escaping into the Exegorth from the asteroid belt. I'll let you hit pause, you can read this, and we're just going to carry on. So now as I mentioned earlier, this outer shell does stretch out and just kind of be careful on yours. If you're not planning on opening it up, of course you may have also found this out already. If you try and open it too far, you're going to stretch out the little cardboard inserts that are kind of acting as a spring mechanism, if you will, that kind of closes this back up. Aside from that though, once you open it up, obviously it does reveal a nice presentation. You see the Bestman Han Solo standing down at the end of the Falcon ramp. And that ramp and post are extended out from the backdrop, giving you a nice little 3D look of the environment. Off to the right side, you see the Minoc mounted on the back of the cardboard. And then the plastic that's wrapped around the front has this little foggy effect painted onto it. So the presentation kept in the box is still looking very nice. And now taking a look at the figure first, out of the packaging, this is an awesome looking Han Solo figure. Now I don't have my single carded release of Han Solo yet, that's still on pre-order, but to my knowledge I believe this is the same figure as what we're getting with that release. Minus the breathing mask, but I also can't speak to any differences in paint detailing, so that just might have to say that for another time. But going in on the looks of the face, I mean, obviously this is using the new face printing technology, and it is fantastic looking. I think they nailed the sculpting of the figure much better than they did on the Han Solo figure that was released for the New Hope version. But overall to the entire face, just a wonderful paint job. Everything really hit the mark here, I think. Going in on the upper half of the figure, first up, you got his dark blue jacket that he's wearing. Nice sculpting there for all the various wrinkle folds and stuff of the plastic. You can see numerous pockets sculpted in on the vest portion of the jacket, which that part is removable, revealing a nice white shirt underneath. I mean, really with this figure, we're just white arms away from getting a Han Solo Carbonite or just about to go in or dirty him up, and you've got him coming out for the beginning of Jedi. So that would be pretty cool to get. But anyways, carrying on with the rest of this jacket on the left sleeve, you see a little pocket sculpted in on there. And then on the back, the detailing's looking pretty good too with various seams and stuff sculpted in there. The hand sculpting looks pretty good with that right hand getting the little trigger finger extended out. And that left hand, first kind of a generic pose, you know, a mostly closed hand. And then you get an additional left hand with a little pointy finger sticking out, you know, the way he likes to always talk to people and point at them. So that's a pretty nice little thing to get here. Through the waist area of the figure, you got some nice belt detailing, black belt, little bits of notches and stuff sculpted in there, nice silver painting for the buckle, and even some slight brown painting for what I'm assuming are the belt loops of the pants. The holster that he's wearing is just a fantastic paint job to that. Wonderful weathering to it. Lots of pouches and stuff sculpted in there. And then on the front, you got some silver paint buckle detailing. You see the silver and black communicator on the one side of his belt. And then as it swings around to the rest of the backside, more silver for the buckle detailing and some silver painting for the little grommets and stuff on the side. So this holster is really sharp looking. Obviously it's functioning. You can see you can slide that blaster in there, but you got that little tab that wraps around the gun and keeps it into place. Continuing down for the leg area of the figure, you know, he's got the brown pants, yellow stripes running down the side. I will say this is where things kind of fall apart a little bit for me on this figure. The brown of his legs doesn't entirely match up. It's more of a glossy finish on the very top part of the thigh where it extends from the hips. And then when you get to the mid part of the thigh, it's a little bit duller of a brown. 
and then also the seams at least on his left leg don't quite match up as you see here I have the front of the leg lined up with that little seam running down the center of the pants but as it slides around then the yellow is off a little bit and then if you know if I twist the leg to make the yellow line up then the front looks weird so little bit off the mark here aside from that though everything else really is looking good wrinkle for the fabric sculpted in there the boots have wonderful texturing to the plastic giving you that leathery look of the boots with a pretty nice black paint job to that and to be honest i'm not sure if it's the black paint job or if it's the brown at the top that's painted in so either way that area is looking really good as for articulation on this figure, that head area does have the new uh, system here, if you'll call it that, where the ball joint is down in the neck. So you get a great range of motion in the head area with it spinning all the way around. Uh, of course, you get your side to side tilting with a good range there. And even that neck, there's a ball joint down here in the bottom. So you get a great range of motion there within the head and neck area. As far as the shoulder area, you're getting well above 90 degrees there. So great range with that. And then, of course, they do both swivel all the way around. At the elbow area, you get you straight out and above 90 degree bend there. As far as wrist articulation, both of them are going to spin all the way around. And then this right hand being the one that holds the blaster, it does have a little bit of up and down movement. Whereas both left hands, both the one that's a little closed and his pointy finger, is going to be your side to side movement. As far as the waist articulation, you can see it's just above the belly here. And you get your turning side to side does get a little tight as you get to about this far you could probably force it around I don't want to do that to mine not really much to speak of for crunching just a tiny bit forward and back it's really hard to tell at the leg area you're gonna get the splits about like so and then they're gonna come out well because of the holster this is all you're gonna get for his right leg but that left leg comes straight out and they both go back that far of course you get to turning at the top of the thigh not gonna get all that much turning out of uh, his right leg again because the holster is attached at the kneecap it's double jointed so pretty good range of motion there and for the feet you got your forward and back and of course you're turning at the ankle and this set comes with an impressive five accessories first you got your minoc the blaster his left hand with the pointed finger that i already talked about a hydro spanner and the breathing mask first up the minoc and i gotta say this thing is impressive looking really nicely sculpted you got lots of little, uh, I don't know, detailing on the body, whatever those little scales or whatever are. On the underside of the belly, you got a little bit of lighter brown painting to it, I suppose, I'd say. It's much more glossy anyways, and that's within the belly itself. The rest of it is just a little bit more of a matte brown. Within the mouth area, you've got a couple different browns painted in there, all looking really nice. I'm really glad they didn't go with the suction cup feature that they did on the three and three quarter inch version a while back, but things are looking really good. His wings ha do have some transparency to them, so when you hold it up to the light, you can kind of just make out some veins and stuff painted in there. And just for a little bit of scale representation here, you can see he comes up to almost Han Solo's shoulders on this 6-inch figure. So an impressive wingspan there. And in case you're wondering, there's no articulation on this Minoc figure. Uh, for me, no big deal. Uh, maybe for others, that might be a big deal. And then the Hydro Spanner he comes with, that's pretty nicely sculpted. Looking at a screenshot from Empire Strikes Back, it certainly seems pretty representative of what was on the screen when he was coming out from working on the Millennium Falcon when it started getting hit by asteroids. Uh, decent piece of plastic. Mine was a little bit warped in the packaging, but a little bit of time underneath the hairdryer straightened that right out. Has no problem fitting in either hand. Next up is this breathing mask. Very nice sculpting to it. As you can see, it's mostly clear plastic, which I believe it was in the film anyways. You do have a touch of silver painting for some metal parts around the nose, and then buckle detailing where that elastic band is attached. And this, as I said, it's elastic, so it stretches around nicely around Han Solo's head. The tube itself is relatively soft, but it's still holding its shape. And then at the end, you got this other canister where it's uh, painted like a light gray, I would say. Got a little bit of red painting for a button of some sorts, and then that does clip onto his jacket nice and easily. Not tight, it's not going to ruin the plastic on the jacket or anything. So overall, a great looking accessory here, and really kind of just completes the look of Han Solo being inside the Exegorth. And for the blaster, you got a nicely sculpted representation of how his blaster looked. Unfortunately, no silver paint detailing at the end of the blaster, but you do have some brown painted in on the handle of the blaster itself. Otherwise, like I said, sculpting's good. Fits nicely in his right hand where that index finger is extended out. And no problem sliding that into his holster and then getting that strap around it and clipping it back in. 
So overall, this is a great looking set. Like I said, I don't have the single release of Han Solo yet, so I can't give a direct comparison, but this is just a fantastic looking figure. Get in the extra Minoc accessory, the breathing mask, the hydro spanner, the left hand, and all of that in an impressive packaging, which only sold for $34.99. That's not too bad of a value in my opinion. I'm definitely glad I was able to get this set added into my collection. And so that wraps up this look at the Han Solo Exegorth set. Uh, what was your experience picking this up? Uh, did you get it at the San Diego convention or did you get it on Hasbro Toy Shop? And how was that ordering process for you? I'd love to know. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.